praise God. Thank God you are here and have decided to take time from your busy schedule to be here with us. You got about a minute and a half, guys, and we're going to pull this train out the station. So call a loved one, call a friend, and tell them, give us 40, 45 minutes of your time. I promise you, I promise you, you'll be blessed. So prepare yourself, saints. Prepare yourself. Pastor's in the zone tonight, and he's focused. I can promise you that. About 30 seconds and we're pulling out this station, saints. Okay, just looking at who some of the people that's in church today, Sister Faith. Um, Brother Roger, rest God. Thank God you guys are here with us. Deaconess Bonds, good to see you here. Thank God for you. Love you, Crystal. Now, things you do for the body and for the house of Christ, those type of things. Let me move here. Move. Let me move the church so I won't get distracted. If I didn't call your name, don't get offended. Don't give the devil the satisfaction of trying to have you distracted before the word of God comes forth. So, guys, if we're doing, let's get out, gear ourselves up. Pull your mind in to receive from God. If you expect something from God, I promise you God will meet you every single time. But if you don't expect nothing, don't get upset if you don't receive anything. So I'm saying have a spirit of expectation. And before we do battle here in the natural, let us first step in the spiritual because the natural battle we are doing is dealing with spiritual things. So let's get to praying. And praying is nothing but calling out, Lord, in the natural what we need done in this calling out in the spiritual what we need done in the natural. Okay? Let's go with for the throne of grace, if you will, saints. Father, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you for who you are and for all that you have done. Another day that you have made, another choice. We have chosen to rejoice and to be glad in it. We want to tell you thank you, Lord, for who you are and for all that you have done. We want to tell you thank you because you didn't have to choose us, Lord, but yet you did. We want to say thank you, Lord. We are one in the number, Lord. We have the use and the activities of our limbs with our, our sound mind, Lord, to do the things, Lord, that you desire of us and our heart, Lord God, to fulfill your will for our lives. So, Lord, we thank you and bless you because, Lord God, you didn't have to do it. But you did. And so you told us to come before your presence with thanksgiving. And then you said, make our request known unto you. Lord, here is my cry. Bless the saints right now that they have a spirit of expectation and do not let them down, Father. Meet the saints right where they are, Lord, and be able to touch them with a word, Lord God, that will help them right where they're at, dealing with the things that they are dealing with in life. Lord, they have gone throughout this week thus far and has taken, Lord God, some blows from the enemy. But this is a time, Lord, where we recharge to be able to deal with the things, Lord, you have called us to do. Oh, Father, my Father, I pray that you bless the saints that they remove any distractions will come up with the purpose of trying to take their mind and their hearts offer of what you call for them to do. Oh, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus that you may bind every demonic spirit that raises up with the purpose, Lord, of trying to pull your kids back or pull them under. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus that we stand firm, stand up, and stand right, Lord, that you may be pleased with the life which we live and the manner which we live in. Help us to be that light that people can look on us and see you and glorify not us but you, Lord. We choose to trust your name and trust your word every step of the way. You have never let us down, Lord, so therefore we tout, we boast, and we proclaim the blood of Jesus that covers us, Lord, and protects us and watches over us, Lord. You are our God, Lord, our intercessor. You are the one, Lord God, that covers us, Lord. You're the messy taste between God and us that we may be able to, Lord, boldly come before the throne of grace. So, Father, I pray for three groups of people, Lord, here tonight. Those, Lord, that are here right here with us. Help them to stay focused and in the moment that they may be ready, Lord God, to hear the word and take the word and apply it to their lives, Lord, to those that will be joining us shortly, Lord. I pray that you bless them, protect them, that they may get to a safe place, Lord, that they may be able to hear the word, Lord, without interference, that they may be able to find out exactly what is it that you have in it for them. And, Lord, to those that will not be joining us tonight for whatever reason, I plead the blood of Jesus that you lay it on their heart. Trouble them, Lord, that they may go back at a later date to view the message to find out exactly what do you have in it for them, Lord. What is it that you have said to them, for them, 
about them, Lord. Deal your word. Oh, Father, I pray that you bless me tonight that I may stay locked in and focused, Lord, to hear what you have to say and do that which you have called me to do, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus right now and by my own free will in closing, I give the power of attorney of this message to the Holy Spirit. Let him exegete the word that he may speak to thy people that we all may grow together in a spirit, Lord God, of excitement. Now this prayer, we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. It is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior, for you are Jesus. You are. That's right, saints. You're the Christ. That means he is the anointed one, and that's the one we stand, will stand for and stand on. So with that said, saints, let's gear ourselves up. I guess you can tell that I'm kind of geared up and ready to roll, uh, ready to roll with the word today. So I promise you guys, I'm going to do my best to stay focused in on the moment. So let me apologize, first of all, um, for last week. Um, not apologizing um, for the words that we gave. Not definitely would never apologize for the word, but I want to apologize. I was a little unfocused with some things. I had a lot of things that I was trying to do at one time. Last week, of course, was our focus on your family um, Sunday. So therefore, when y'all saw me Wednesday night in Bible study, we had filmed also Sunday morning's worship. So there was um, a lesson. So there was two lessons going through my head at one time, a lot of information. And so therefore, I get scatterbrained a lot in situations like that. But we're focused now. We're focused in on the word of God right here, right now. So let's get into the word of God, saints. I want you to go with me to the book of Acts, the 27th chapter, and our ever popular slingshot effect, which we're going to right now... Um, jump into and that is i'm going to go back and i want to read um the things that we covered last week we covered a couple of verses um a uh, good number of verses from what we normally do from last week but i'm going to read over those verses and then we're going to touch them and then we're moving forward with new information is that okay so um go back to acts the 27 chapter i'm gonna start at 11 and i'm going to read down to verse number 18 and then we will touch on that and then we will move forward all right so this is what the word of god says um says here acts 27 and 11 it says Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not coming to us to winter's end, the more part advised to depart thus also, if by any means they may attend to Phoenice and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and, and live towards the southwest and northwest. And when the and when the south winds blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosened thence and sailed close by Crete. But not long after, not long after there arose against it a temperous wind called Euroclidon. And when the ship was when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the winds, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is which is called Clytus, Clytus, we had much work to come by the boat. Claudius, I'm sorry. Which when they had taken up, they used help undergirding the ship and fearing, fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strict sail, and so were driven. And we, being exceedingly tossed with a temperance, the next day, they lightened the ship. And so what we touched bases on last week, just some of the things that we touched bases with, guys, and we was beginning to point out, you, we were pointing out last week that um, you can't worry about um, what's going on, uh, what the crowd says around you. If God tell you to do a thing, in verse 12, what they was pointing out with, the, the, sit, the consensus, the crowd decided, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Everything looks good. But you don't worry about what no one say or what looks good. Your job is to trust God, to believe God, and look to God every step of the way. So if God says sit still, your job is to sit still, even though things look good. Because in verse number 12, we quickly found out. And this in verse number 13, we found out because everything started out looking good. And as I pointed out to you, the devil, what he wants to do is pay you up front. And then he wants to work you later on. But God says, no, no, no. Let's just get to working. And I promise you in the end, it's going to be worth everything that you did. I'm going to make it worth your while, God says. And my dad taught me at a very early age, saints, that the hardest money to make is money you have already spent. 
Lord knows, have you ever had to get an advancement on your job or you already spent the money for the paycheck that you're finna get? Well, it's a hard week to work when you know your money is already gone. So the devil pays you up front. And after you don't splurge and, and enjoy everything that he has given you, you have signed the contract. And now he's saying to you, now it's time to pay up, baby. And I'm going to work you like a Hebrew slave, the devil goes with. But God says, no, no, no. Come and work with me. I know it's kind of backbreaking what I'm telling you to do. I'm not going to put more on you than you can burn. But I want you to just do what I tell you. And I know it's hard. You don't feel like it. But I appreciate you keep going forward. But as I said, once and I will say again, God does not pay us when we want him to, but when he pays, he pays. That's right, say He pays good. I mean, have you ever did a job and after you finished doing a job, you expected this and somebody gave you this? God do exceed abundance. So when God pays you, baby, it's a good thing. You may have to wait longer than everybody else, but when God, no good thing will God withhold from you, he says. So that's what you were finding out that we were saying in the midst of it all. Some people, because it looks good, they're ready to roll with it, but God tell you to sit still. A lot of swindlers have taken advantage of people because the people did not wait. They jumped in. Watch the quick talkers. Because they'll talk you out of everything that you have. And so we were just um, also pointing out that um, some storms that come up in your life. And we said um, there was a storm, Paul, and they gave the storm a name, Eurocliden. And so what he's saying in that situation is sometimes storms arise in your life or things happen to you that's so devastating that you remember them by name. You remember the date. You remember the time. You remember the place. You remember everything about that storm that rose in your life. I will never forget this day. There are certain days that's marked in your calendar that shook the ground that you stood on in the world that you live in. But you stood still and you trust God. You believe God, but you will never forget that date or that time. And so that's what it is. That, that, that storm was so bad, they gave it a name. And if we was to think in American history, if we was to name one storm that was so devastating, it caught everybody in America's attention because it did such devastating work. We would call it what? What hurricane was it? That was down, you know, guys, down in um, Louisiana, Texas, all of that place right there. That was a storm that took place back then, back some years ago. But we would never forget it. <laughs> well, there is also another situation, my wife was saying, um, another situation which 9-11, which took place in our life. But uh, there are just certain things that take place that is so devastating, you give it a name. Katrina was the hurricane that we were talking about. And Katrina did some major damage that even to this day, it leaves imprints in our mind. So he was just pointing out that sometimes in your life, there's going to be things that's going to leave things in your mind that you'll never forget. Storms in your life. But God brought you to it so he can get you through it. So just trust God. Hold on to him, saints. And I promise God will get you through. And then we uh, also said, you know, pretty much in the midst of it, let go. Sometimes when they said they, that the ship did not, when they came up... Um, and um, to Claudius, what they did is the ship was, it was such a fight. They just let it loose and let it ride. Whatever's going to be, is going to be. Sometimes in Christ, you got to just let it go and let it flow. Whatever's going to be, I can't stop it, Lord, but I'm going to ride this thing with you. As I say often is, if God take me to the bottom, I don't know what it is he want me to see, but I'm going to go down there and see it because at the bottom with God is better than being at the top without him. And the last thing we touch place on, guys, is you got to get to work in. Sometimes life, everything crumbles that you know and that you plan. All your plans crumble right in front of you. And when it's all said and done, you got to get your hands to move it. You got to start picking up pieces and start putting this thing back in place. You can't sit there and cry about the spilt milk. You got to wipe it up and get yourself another glass. And if there's not no more milk, God's saying, then you're lactose intolerant. I need you to drink some water. Quit crying about what you don't have. Start thanking God for what you do have and give God the praise and let's keep it moving. Is that okay, saints? Is that a good recap? Now can we get to some new information? I guess you guys can see that. Pastors, I'm, I'm rejuvenated. I don't rested a little bit, guys. And so mm, mm, mm. I wish I was in church now with Breon. Come on, Bree, let's go. So here we go, guys. Now we're moving with new information. We had new information. So um, verse number 9, 27 and 9, Acts 27 chapter and verse number 9. It's what the word of God says. It says, In the third day we cast out, uh, cast out our own hands and tackled the, uh, and tackled, uh, tackling the, of the ship. And so what he's saying is, um, just what I was saying, guys, the third day, they don't been through this, this, this turmoil and they have been taking um, a lot of um, things have been happening to the ship. The ship has been taking a battering and a beating. 
A ship has been really going through a lot. But here's the thing. Whether you like the ship or not that you're on, you are on that ship. So your job is to make sure you will do the best you can to make sure that ship holds together until it gets to the ground. And sometimes when a ship has taken a beating and that ship may be your job, you may not like the job that you're at, but God has you there. Instead of tearing the job down, you got to do the best you can to hold it up until God gets you to another place. Because believe it or not, you are on that ship. And so that's what it says. It says, and the third day we cast out with our own hands to tackle. Tackling, fixing the ship up. So you got to quit complaining about the circumstances and situations you're in. Just make the best of what you have and the rest will leave up to God. All you can do is what you can do. Don't worry about what another person has. Don't worry about what another person is doing. Your job is to fix up what God has given you. And when God has seen that you will take care of what it is he has given you, God will then give you better. But sometimes you're going to be in circumstances and situations which you cannot control. And your job is to hold it together to God bring it in. I know you want a different hand, but um, sad to say, the hand we have is the hand, the hand we dealt with is the hand we have. So take that hand, guys, and deal with it. So if a lot of turmoil and things going on in your, in your life, stop. Examine your life and see what it is that you have done to brought this storm on. And if you have done nothing, then you just hold on and ride it until the storm comes in, guys. That's your job. Your job is to hold on and ride the storm and to God calm everything down. That's what we have to do. And that's what they were saying there. They got about it. The third day this thing has been going on instead of complaining about it. Okay, the first day I can understand. Shock and awe. The thing happened to you and it totally stunned you. The second day I even give you a little grace. The second day you're trying to get your head together because you are kind of um, bewildered what's going on and you're feeling sorry for yourself. Okay, the first day shock and awe. The second day you get to have your pity party. But the third day get up and let's get moving. Sitting down crying about it ain't going to get it fixed. So your job is to get up and let's move with what we can. And if you can't do much, then do what you can. Rest leave you up to God and let God fix the rest of it. So what they're doing is they had a lot of disadvantages on the ship. The ship wasn't just out of some little port to where everything was nice. They was out there in the middle of the ocean. And this thing was raging and tossed. A temperance wind was on them. And so they got to fix the problem right up under the storm. Sometimes you're going to have to work with it while you're in the storm. You can't wait till the storm get over. You got to fix it right then. You got to deal with it right then. So whoever you are, there's great contention between you and a significant other. And you want to say, let me give it a few days. Okay, you gave it a few days and it's still raging. Your job is to go with your own hands and deal with the situation. And humility solves a lot of problems. The word of God says a soft answer turns away wrath. Sometimes you just got to go in and speak to the situation in love. To be able to go with the situation and deal with it, even while the storm is raging. There's a saying, never argue with a fool. People standing by won't know who's who. So what you do is sometimes you just got to let the person get it off their chest. But then it comes a time when you say, okay, you said what you had to say. I heard you. If you made a mistake, admit it. Okay, now let's, let's move on with this. But then there comes a time when you got to deal with the elephant in the room. You got to deal with it. I mean, you just have to deal with it. And if it's going to cause a problem, I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem pulling the scab off a sword. Yes, it may be painful. Yes, it may have some bleeding again. But you know what? If the, if the, if the scab is infected, it's got to come off. And sometimes you got to have that, um, that, let's say that, um, that, that um, intense fellowship. You got to have that intense fellowship meeting. Every now and then. So you got to be able to deal with the situation at hand. Deal with it as we go on because you can't just let it sit there. You got you to gotta fix the problem while the ship is raging. Okay? And that's what he was saying right there, guys. The third day, they got their own hands and they got the busy. They got busy and they got to working. That's what God wants from you. That's what God wants from me. You can't stay still too long. You got to get about God's business. In verse number 20, it says, it says, and when neither the sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest laid on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. After a while, when there was no more stuff, you didn't see, this storm has been raging so long, you couldn't see the stars. You couldn't see the sun. So during the daytime, you couldn't tell night from day. 
because the sun was shining, but because of the clouds that you was under, they was not able to see it. And at night, you couldn't see the stars in any way, form, or fashion to navigate you. So you're out there totally with no control. Totally with no control. You should not care what it looks like. You should only say what God say say. So when things get dark, it's because the sun is always shining, guys. I don't care how bad of a storm or tornado or a hurricane, no matter what you're in, the sun is always shining. If you could just get up over the clouds that you're under, you'll see the sun is shining. The clouds does not affect the sun. The sun is always shining. The sun shines down on the earth from the top. The sun is above the clouds. That's a metaphoric way of saying in the midst of it all, it may be dark in your life and it may be raging in your life, but Christ is still on the throne and Christ is looking down on all the turmoil you're going through. And I assure you, all you have to do is hold on and sooner or later he will part the clouds and you will see the sun continuously shining. But what you have to do in the midst of the storm is say what God say, say. In the midst of the storm, you got to do what God say do. I don't care what it looked like. If God said it, you ought to believe it, and that will settle it. Because sometimes when God lay a thing out, you got to know him. You got to know God. And when you know God and you know his voice, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how bad it may look. I'm okay in that peace because God with me is better than the whole world against me. And so God loves you, saints, and so much he wants you to stand firm. Now, let me give you an example of knowing your God. It's good to know his voice. The word says, my sheep know my voice, and a strange one they will not follow. See, when you know God's voice, when you have a relationship with him, when you have conversation with God, you will know when God has said a thing, even when he didn't say a thing. You will know when God has said a thing, even when he didn't say a thing. Meaning he don't have to say it. See, you remember your mother or your father? Right. You got angry and upset with you. You did something wrong and you sitting there and you know they look um, looking at you and you can feel them looking at you and you looking down like you read something and you about to break out into a, a holy sweat and just start shaking and falling because you know their eyes just piercing down on you. And you finally just, you, you, you know, you try not to, but you look up and you see them and they just look at you. Their eyes say everything. You can know what they're saying even before they say it. Some of the greatest conversations your parents ever had with you is when they didn't say a word, I wish you would. I will smack the gray off your hair. That's what parents would say to you sometimes. That's what they say. And they didn't open their mouth. But you know what they said. No, I ain't going to do that. Mama said don't. Mama didn't say nothing. You weren't looking at mama. So those are the things. But here's an example in my life, guys. I recall, okay, so I'm minding my own business in the house of God, just giving God praise and worship because he is so marvelous and great. And I thank him so much for being so good. So I'm in the house of God, and that's what I'm doing, giving him his praise. And all of a sudden, my attention was distracted by the devil. So at this time, Donna comes walking by me. And so I look at her, and I say, um, Duncan Hines, how you doing? And so as I'm sitting there looking at her and talking to her, and I looked at her, and the Holy Spirit said something to me. He said, She's not yours. And I said to him, because I know his voice, I said, yet? She's not mine yet? Back to a question form to the Holy Spirit. He never responded. He never responded. And it's almost like I know the, I know the relationship with him. It's almost like a giggle he gave. Like he gets it. He gets it. See, I understood my gift. And my gift, not the gift that God has given me, but the gift that I was asking of the Father. See, God knows his word says no good thing will he withhold from you. And because I knew God's voice, when I looked at her and gazed on her, and God says to me, the Holy Spirit said, He's not, she's not yours. Well, what he was saying is pretty much as engaging me in conversation to see how sharp I was at the moment. And I didn't respond yet. Yeah. She's not mine yet. Yeah. As if to say, it's mine. Can I get my present yet, God? No. And so the issue that was taking place in the midst of all that, God was pointing to, see, I was looking at Donna, but God was looking at Firm Foundation and realized she's a key, intricate part to Firm Foundation. And if she's not there, there's certain personalities I'm not going to pull into Firm Foundation. So God was looking at a bigger picture. And so the thing is, because I knew my God's voice 
and I knew the relationship, even in the time, because at that time in my life, that was a temporary storm that was going on in my life. There was great raging going on. There was a time in my life, the darkest moment of my life. As I said to people many times, I never, and I'm not going to knock people who have been there because thank God I, have, I don't have to walk in your shoes, but I never consider suicide. But I sure wish during those times somebody would have did the job. I was okay if somebody just broke in my house and said, I'm going to kill you. Good. Here, shoot me right here. Make sure you don't miss. That's why I was at in pain. That's how dark the storm was. That's how the rank, the, um, that's how the sea was raging at the time. But in the midst of it, I stayed in the house of God because I do understand no matter how bad a storm is, the sun is always shining above those clouds. And so that's where it was right there, guys. And so you see, that's the point that God was making to you in the midst of it all. You need to say what God say, say in a storm. I don't care how the storm, how long the storm lasts. Look, guys, and when and when neither sun nor stars in many days appear, and no small tempest laid upon us, all hope that we should be saved was take then take it away even if you had a little bit of hope that was left it seemed like so many other people gave up man we're not going to make it i'm not going to say that god says you should live and not die so why i'm gonna say what you say say because you're in a gloomy situation God says, no, 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 no. And God says, if I'm for you, I'm against all these things against you. No, I'm going to just say what God says. Say. Now, the storm may be raging and it may be dark, but here's the thing that I understood about that storm. I'm still living, baby. It still may be a lot of things that I see. It still may be a lot of things that are going on. Fear may be all over me, but I'm still breathing, baby. I'm still living. And until God pulled me down into the water and drowned me, I'm going to believe God in the midst of the storm all the way until God get me out of it. And that's what is taking place right there. For several days, they ain't see the sun nor the moon. They could not tell what even time of the day it was. They was being tossed with all of these. Sometimes the winds in your life going to toss you. You don't know if you're going or coming. But if God ain't killed you yet, keep breathing, baby. Breathe in, breathe out, and just trust God until he gets you to a safe place. Because if God wants you dead, he would have killed you. You made it. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And so that was taking place right there, guys. You'll begin to find out. You got to then say in these situations, believe God and trust God in the midst of it all. Because if God promised you a thing, I don't care what arises in your life. As long as you obey God, God has to then bring that thing which he promised to wish to you. So in the midst of it all, knowing his voice, in the midst of the darkness of my life, just having a relationship and a, uh, uh, having a conversation with the Holy Spirit, he asked me a question. And I responded, with a question. I can feel my father in a proud look to smile like he gets it. Because later on, that same question I asked my father, he showed me it was what you asked for. And my gift was granted. And because of that gift, Firm Foundation is blessed tremendously. Because of that gift, our kids have been blessed tremendously. Because of that gift, multiple People around the world have been blessed tremendously. When you are fitly joined together what God wants you, you will then work in the purpose that God have you for. You have a calling, saints. God is waiting on you. He's got a lot for you to do. I know it may be scary to trust him, but it's okay. We're in the storm. I told you to be in the storm with God is better than being out of a storm without God. It just feels good when you trust the Holy Spirit. It's scary. It's a roller coaster ride. And the roller coaster ride is going to twist you, turn you, flip you up and down. But guess what, guys? When you're with God, it's going to bring you back into home port safely. He's going to bring you back into home port safely. So what you have to do is trust God and believe God every step of the way. So that's what it was because I knew him. I was able to ask him a question and I got confirmation because if God would have said, no, she's not yours, then that would have been it. But he never said that. He left it hanging. And so by him leaving it hanging, I was then living in joy saying, Lord, thank you. I thank you, Father. And that's exactly then what God did to bring us through and to make sure he got us through a situation and circumstance in the darkness and in the storm, saints. Your job is to believe God, to trust God, and depend on him, knowing that he will never, ever, ever leave you. He will not forsake you. God is with you. God is for you. And God will see you through it. 
Do you see the excitement of just knowing God is on your side? Just know that excitement. I don't care what it looked like. Yeah, it's a roller coaster ride. And sometimes you just got to run to your father and hold on to him. Sometimes I metaphorically see myself when I'm in a very bad crisis situation. I've used this example before of a kid, of a kid, a little kid. Um, you have a, a grandbaby or your child or your niece or nephew, what have you. And they're, say, like one and a half years old. And there's a little puppy. And a beautiful, a cute little puppy. The little puppy is playing. The puppy is playing with the kid. But the kid is scared of the puppy. So what the kid does is run to you and hold on to your leg crying. And what you're doing with one leg, you're pushing the puppy back. And the puppy just wrestling and trying to tear your shoestrings up. But the kid is afraid because the kid does not understand. The puppet does not mean them bad. That uh, metaphor I want to give you is sometimes in life, when you're going through a tumultuous situation, you run to the father. And God is just pushing the situation back, saying it comes to make you strong. This storm that you will give a name will be a point, a reflection point that you will always remember where God grew you. And God surely will do it. God will grow you in a situation like that. But God is not scared of the storm. He's just like a puppy, just pushing it back with his leg, kicking it back. At the same time, he reaches down and pick you up because you have the confidence that when the Father have you in his hands, no matter what's going on down there, it can't get me. And sometimes he even do you one better and put you on his neck where he's holding on and you looking down at the puppy, barking, screaming, and yelling, and jumping up, but it can't get to you because the Father loves you. Verse number 21, guys. It says, can you imagine all that, guys, we got out of two verses so far? We move forward in God's words. It says, But after long abstinence, Paul, stu Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Well, thank you, Jesus. I never saw that. Paul stood forth in the midst of them, in the midst of them, and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosened from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. See, sometimes in the midst of it all, God has something for you to say, and you said it, and the people don't listen. And then when HE2 hockey sticks break out in their life, guess what? You sit down and you say, why didn't you just listen to me? If you would have listened, you would not be here. Now, in America or in our culture, if you will, our culture, sometimes a mother would say when a kid do their own thing and they end up in a lot of trouble or end up in trouble with the law or end up getting hurt or whatever, they would say a, a, a hard head makes a... Now, we're going to look at, again, what Paul is saying here. He says, but after long abstinence, Paul stood in the midst of them. Sometimes you got to walk up in the midst. When you're looking at a person in a crisis situation and they're going through a lot, you got to walk right up in their face and say, did I not tell you? Did I not tell you not to do this? Did I not forewarn and tell you which way this thing will go? Why won't you just listen? Why won't you listen? But here's another thing you need to understand about that, guys. You need to understand in verse number 21. I have let things run their course before you but in. Sometimes you got to let it all happen. See, that person is not going to hear what you have to say. God tells you in his word, don't give that which is holy unto the dogs, nor cast your pearls before the swine. Wisdom, the difference between wisdom and knowledge is, knowledge is knowing what to do. Wisdom is knowing when to do it. So sometimes you could tell a person, you could tell a person knowledge, but they don't have the wisdom to obey the knowledge which you have given them. So in the midst of it all, you have to let junk hit the floor with them. You got to let them lose it sometimes. Parents, listen to me. You can't always jump in and bail them out. If they didn't listen to what you had to say, then you are not responsible for the mess that they are in. And so what you got to do is sometimes you got to let them feel it. Now, if the kids have done everything that they're supposed to do, and they did the best that they, yeah, I'm right there with my children all the way in. But I told my kids, they get a get out of jail free card one time. Oh, you get a one-time get-out-of-jail-free card. I'm allowing you to be stupid one time. But after that, well, okay, Donise don't count because she she get a, a okay, she get a couple of times. I'm going to help her whenever she needs help. But this is what God says right here. So he, then he says, uh, Paul is saying in the midst of them, then he said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. You should have listened to me. See, to your younger people, these older people don't been through some things. 
And when mama look at that guy that you just think is just, he give you butterflies. Oh, he's just something for your stomach. He turns everything and your mama say he ain't no good. When your daddy look at him and say, Man, come, come, let me talk to you. Come here, little African American. Come here, let me talk to you for a minute. So what he is pointing to is he trying to tell you, it, it, it's some things that they have been through. They know what trouble look like. They know a bad decision when they see one. They understand fully some of these things that you're about to get into. And it's not that they don't want to see you advance. They want to see you advance properly. But the problem we have is we want it all. And one thing about it, we try to tell to the kids, I love my kids. One thing about it, you can't get everything that mama and dad have in a weekend. It didn't take us a weekend to accumulate all the things we have. They came through a lot of, 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 of payments and time and making right decisions and denial. This world don't want to deny nothing. They want everything right then, and then they can't understand when they load it up on the debt. Let me tell you something. Debt is for real. Stress is even real. Stress can change the whole chemistry of your body. So when an older person is trying to tell you something, they're trying to help you. If I see nine people run their head full steam into a brick wall and pass, fall back and pass out, and you telling me I got to be the tenth? Oh, no. I fix my hair and sit right there and watch everybody. I might just, you know, hey, God, I make me an entrepreneur. If you're going to keep running your head against the wall, I'm going to film it, baby, and put it on YouTube. Let me get something for it. So the point that's being made is when an older person is trying to tell you something, listen. Listen to what they're saying. Because God speaks in wisdom, and wisdom comes through experience. So what you have to do is trust God every step of the way. So Paul said, I tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell you guys, but you would not listen to me. You should not have loosened. I know it looked good in the beginning. But I'm telling you, I've been here long enough to know how this thing work. I've been here long enough to know how this thing go. My dad told me this one time. He says, um, he says, um, a, a dear, dear, dear friend of his, um, his family, they moved upstate to New York from down south. And you know, things down here is way slower than what things are in New York. And he said he was so struck when he got into the city, looking around at how fast everything was moving and traffic just moving. He said, I won't, I, he said, I think it was like 30 minutes the guy was trying to cross the street. But the traffic, and he said what he did is he watched a dog, a dog cross the street. See, the dog was from New York. The dog lived there. So the dog knew how it worked. He said, I watched that dog cross the street. And that's how I learned how to cross the street in New York. He said, what I did is, I didn't try to run across the street. I just got on one and was in between two cars and then got on another one. And then all the way across the street. Now, that may be dangerous, but he learned how to cross the street in that city. So the point that's being made, there are things, if you just watch people, God can get you through some things. God can help you. Somebody is trying to tell you something. They just need you to listen. God just needs you to pay attention to what he is trying to say. He don't need you to suffer no more. You have suffered enough and God said, I'm trying to get you through it. But why won't you hearken unto what someone is trying to warn you? Sirs, ye should have hearken unto me and not have loosened from creep and to have gain, disharm, and loss. If you would have just listened, you would not have to deal with what you're dealing with. You would not have to deal with what you are dealing with. God says, all I want you to do is just listen. So that's what is taking place right there with Paul. What he is going through, he's trying to tell the people. Now, Paul ain't beating the people down and trying to make them feel small. But he's saying, if you would have just listened, you wouldn't have lost that thing that is valuable. You wouldn't have lost that valuable thing because you can see right now, he's telling you, the law it says um, the latter part, and to have and to have gained this harm and loss. So that is and is a conjunction word. It joins something together. Two pains because they did not listen. Harm and loss. If you just listen to God, God loves you. God cares for you, and God will see you through. Father, we thank you. We honor you for the time that we have had this night, Lord, in your word. Oh, Lord, I pray that something was said to thy servants, that we may have heard what it was that you said, Lord, and applied it to our lives. Oh, Father, my Father, I plead the blood of Jesus right now 
and pray that you bless us, that we continue to, Lord, love you every step of the way. Help us, Lord, that we continue to look to you and trust you, Lord. Do not let the words that you have given us tonight go void. Help us that we may take those words and apply it to our lives and understand, although we didn't travel, Lord God, with many verses, but Lord, we got a multitude of information that can be beneficial to us in our spiritual lives. So bless the saints, Lord, that we look at quality, not quantity, that we may be able to love you because everything that you have given us tonight is more than enough to sustain us for what we need Feel your word. Now, Lord, for doing this for us, for hearing this prayer, we believe, Lord God, we will give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We ask you to bless us, Lord God, that your word, Lord, stay sharp to our heart, and we'll forever bless your name. For doing this for us, Lord, we're so careful to give thy name the praise, for we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me ask you a question. In getting into the word of God, have God's word by chance touched you? If you are by chance that person out there who have just come by this page or come by this um, channel and you are sitting and you are asking the question, hmm, Lord, you seem to be talking to me and I hear you. I thank you that I know you talking to me and I hear you, but I want to be a part of your team, Lord. Now, if you are a person who do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to know him as your Lord and Savior, I have some good news for you. I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Now, before you move, just hold still, hold still. God is a benevolent God. And so while he's here fixing this, we also want to deal with you out there that once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you was afflicted and you was hurt in the body and you turned and you walked away. And now you would like to rededicate your life to Christ to get back in your place, to get in line. So my question is, I ask you, if you're that person and you once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you turned and walked away and would now like to get back in your rightful place, come and walk with me with the person that never knew Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Pray this prayer with me from your heart. Just say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that you have opened before me. And I thank you for the wisdom that you have given me to walk through it right now. I right now, of my own free will, repent, Lord, of the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, sit on the throne of my heart. If you will come into my life and sit on the throne of my heart, I will serve you, Lord, the rest of the days of my life. So I openly repent. I openly confess that I have made Jesus by my own free will, my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, if you would be so kind as to put that in the comment section, we want to rejoice with you. We want to give God praise and thanks with you. We want to celebrate with you. If all heaven is throwing a party because one has gotten saved and we know the father has slipped out of the party while everybody is celebrating so he can go find that one that once walked away from him and redeem him back, redeem them back to him. Guys, let us know. We just want to celebrate with you. We want to celebrate with you. Now, you may ask, now, what do I do now that I have given my life to Christ? Well, you find you a good Bible-believing church, and you sit down and learn the Word of God that you may grow. Now, you may say, I, I, I don't know what a good Bible-believing church is. I mean, I, I've seen some crazy ones. I, I don't know. Well, stay right here with us until you grow enough in the Word to where you are able to understand fully what is false doctrine, and what is true doctrine, that you may be able to sit with other saints and fellowship with them. Now, you may say, I want to be a part of Firm Foundation. I like this ministry. I want to be a part of it. What do I need to do? Well, we ask you two questions. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God through and through? You say, uh, yeah. Okay, my second question. Are you willing to obey the rules and the regulation of this ministry? So as long as they line up with the word of God, 
you say, well, okay, I don't know much about the word of God, but if it don't sound right, I'll tell you. Okay, then that's good enough for us. Well, with that said, we say, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves people right where they are and push them to where God wants them to be. Now, if you would put that in the comment section, we will celebrate with you for that. You may say, okay, I want to come with you guys because we're going to be in the building Sunday morning. You say, I want to come and I want to fellowship with you. Where are you located? We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville, in the state of North Carolina. If you would Google it, we will be more than happy to be there with you and to hug you and give you a firm handshake. You say, okay, then I thank God, but I want to support this ministry. I want to give to this ministry because I believe um, you may not have all your screws together, but I think you're going to do what's right. Okay, well then, you send to that same address right there, um, firmfoundationoutreach.org. You can give right there, guys. Um, that's where you can go and give, or you can use the QR code to where you can give to us. I would assure you, every dime will be used for the purpose of God. Everything will be used for God's glory and no shady business with the pastor. I promise you guys, and we are dead on course and on time. As I say, you give me 40, 45 minutes of your time, and you can go do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to hold you all day. We gave you enough to hold you until Sunday. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning right there in the house of God, 9 o'clock for Christian education, service at 10 o'clock. You'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Love you.